Right, so we're going to delft clay, sand cast a little acorn, or attempt to at least. So Kerry is just chopping the clay to make sure there's no lumpy bits in it. Just using a scrap of metal, sheet metal. You could use a ruler. Just something so you can make sure there's no big hard clumps in it. and then get one side of the mould yep. and fill it with clay and some people choose to wear gloves to do this if you're not wearing gloves just make sure you wash your hands afterwards because the sand has oils in it right. next got to compress it to make sure there's no air bubbles just hammer it then scrape away any excess so you could use a ruler or let's say it's a little piece of sheet metal just something flat and strong enough that you can scrape along the surface nice and then just need to give it a little dusting with talc so that when we build up the next layer and when we push the um, the shape in, it's less likely to stick together. And then ready to push the shape in. So these particular moulds are designed to stand upright, pour the metal in um, and it would drop down but we haven't had much luck using it the way it's designed whereas most sand casting moulds are designed to put the hole in here and pour straight down onto the shape so we're going to do it that way instead which is why Kerry's popped it in the middle rather than close to where the opening would have been if we were using it the way it was designed to be used Filling up the other side. And then in a second, we're going to whack it with the hammer again. So it's just compressing the two layers. And I've just got it in a roasting tin as well, so it just helps um, keep any of the little scrape-offs. Because that's clean sand and it would be good to use another time. And then the hard bit is trying to get the mould apart again. So a lot of these moulds are round and you need to put your own markers on them. This mould is good because it's got the little square bits to clip in. It just makes it a bit tight for um, getting it apart. And you've got to be really careful when you take it out that you don't knock all the sand into it. So next we've got to put a hole in it where the metal is going to pour through. So that was just a little metal cocktail stick and using a drill bit just to make the hole a little bit bigger. Good. Right, and then we need to widen out the hole on the opposite side to make a little funnel for the metal to pour into. And I'm going to widen that hole a bit more. Right, next up, 
when we put this mold back together there's going to be air trapped where the recess is so you've got to make some little air escape holes so Kerry's poking some holes about five or six around the edges and then going to draw some little channels to the hole so that any air or gases from the molten metal can escape through those little channels and holes. And then just got to double check that they have gone through and that they're clear. And then we're going to pop them all back together. Make sure it's pushed down tight. Good. And then it's ready to take over and set up for melting the metal into it. So we're just making a safe space so that if any of the metal falls, It's not going to fall onto me. You. <laughs> yeah. And then we'll pop the silver in here. We've got some bricks behind it to protect the wall from the heat from the torch. Okay, so we'll sprinkle some borax on. gloves on because it's going to be a bit warm and then when you open it apart make sure it's on the brick just in case it falls out the word? Oh. Oh. so that meant that the air didn't escape fully and the air pockets blocked it from going down so I'm going to have to have another go this time we're going sideways on so that the metal's got less dif distance to travel which means the sprue is going to come out here so it's going to be when we cut it off and tidy it up we're probably going to have to manually put some of that texture back in if it picks it up but because it's got less distance to travel it's more likely to come out as a full mold rather than just stopping when it reaches. Oh, that looks fab. There we go. It does look like some sort of weird 
but Lisa also looks like an acorn.